What's up YouTube? Moser Designer here doing an Unreal Tournament map update. This time around I'm going to be talking about uh, level collision. Uh, I was going to do a full-blown tutorial or full-blown video of me doing collision on this map but it was the footage was getting dragged out that it would be a very very long video so I decided I'm just going to do the collision work on the map and then I'm going to show you guys how I did it in a much smaller uh, test case. So, to begin, I'm going to just do a run through the level, and then I'm going to show you how the collision of the level works and why it's important to do it the way to, to do collision. So, let's do a quick run through the map. So, the last time I did a walk through the map was back on his shell and I played against the bots. So, right now, there are no bots right now. I have turned it off. I have removed the navigation support, just playing an editor. And I've done the collision work where I shouldn't get snagged on the static meshes. It should be pretty smooth. It's not perfect. There's some spots where I need to tune the collision, but if I run against walls, for the most part, I don't get stuck on anything. I just quickly run through things, which is very important because in a multiplayer map, you want to be running around. You want to be smooth. Uh, when you get stuck on things, it just makes the flow. It breaks the flow, and it. Uh, breaks your uh, momentum and it makes uh, the gameplay not fun and could potentially cause you to die by someone else when you get stuck in collision. So having smooth collision is very important. So for the most part this map has a I'd say 97% collision pass done. There's some spots right here. So how did I achieve this? Let's take a look. So here's the map in the editor and it may be hard to see on YouTube, but uh, there are these uh, kind of pink purple colored boxes everywhere. And in fact, there's a lot of them. I'm going to select one. This is called a blocking volume, for those not familiar. I'm going to select all blocking volumes. And that kind of shows a trace and outline of the entire map. So basically when I'm running around, I'm hitting these blocking volumes instead of the the asset collision. Now in most cases a, in a development uh, team the assets you get will have collision on them but sometimes it's very complex and not cheap or sometimes you get assets that don't have any collision on them which is in the case uh, here in Unreal Tournament. Some assets had collision some didn't so I just said F it and I turned off the collision on everything and it pretty much retraced the map with blocking volume so I don't fall through the map. But with blocking volumes I have more control over how I want the flow to work so players don't get caught. For example, on the statue, I've kind of extruded out a trapezoid shape to push players away from the statues so they don't get caught in this corner over here. Another example of me fine-tuning the collision to my own liking for, for better gameplay are these crates. Visually, it looks cool that they're a little separated, but players can get caught in this corner very easily. So I've created a uh, smooth uh, diagonal turn around these boxes as players just run right past them. Another example is this curved pillar. I've uh, extruded and bent a, a cube to have curved edges on it and it allows me to go around the pillar quite smoothly. Same with the rocks. The rocks have very irregular collision so I made my own shape around the rock formation. This is an example of how I did it and just for kicks I'm gonna show you the shapes uh, all selected. So yeah, pretty much I retraced the entire map. It took uh, about a week, so that's why I don't want to record the footage because it'd be too much. And it, it is tedious, but as a level designer, doing collision is a very important part of your job. So it's not the most exciting work, but it needs to be done, and the payoff is worth it when people play your map uh, in a mod scene or in a professional setting uh, for a game that you ship and the, they don't get stuck on things. And that will make for much better gameplay and more memorable maps. So I'm going to do a quick tutorial and show you how I actually did this. So here's a very small example map I just created. Don't read into it too much, but just more to show the point of how to do level collision. So it's a simple, you know, ramp setup you might see in a multiplayer map and I want to go up this ramp. Instantly, I can't get up here. It's weird, but okay, I can jump over it. And what I'm walking on doesn't seem to line up with the 
art. And the same problem here. And if I'm running around, I kind of get caught with these pillars. And if this was a multiplayer map segment, it would be very frustrating to play. So let's see what's wrong with it and how we can fix it. So back in the editor, and a fun thing to know is you can view the collision mesh of a scene by hitting Alt-C. And when I do Alt-C, it might be hard to visualize this on YouTube, but uh, there's this box on this ramp. So the collision mesh of this asset is a box. And that's fine, but it doesn't help with gameplay. I want the collision to be a ramp. And that's why I'm getting bonked on this thing and walking on something invisible. Similarly, these uh, pillars have their collision mesh. That works, but it's in the way as I keep bonking into the edge of the collision mesh. Just zoom in like that line right there. So how, how do we fix this? So we can hit Alt-C again tur uh, to turn off the visual visualization. Sorry. And we can go to right click on any mesh, right click, select, we'll do all static mesh actors. What that does is it won't select your sky or your player stars or your weapon pickups, it'll just select the static meshes and turn off and, and be, so we can edit those without affecting anything else in our scene. And in doing so I also selected the floor which is also static mesh so I need to keep that in mind when I'm doing this tutorial. But uh, So the next step I need to do is disable the collision on the static meshes. So with all of the meshes selected, I'm going to go on the right side in the details, go to collision, and right now it's set to default, we're going to do ignore only pawn. What this should do is that it will accept the weapons, it will accept the, the weapon decals, uh, physical material, bullet impacts, um, footsteps, but it won't accept the player collision, I'll fall through the map. So just a quick test. So, the collision is at the right setting we want it to be. Now, we need to create a blocking volume. So we'll go to our modes. <coughs> Excuse me. And in our modes, we'll type blocking volume. Just drag it into the world. If, you're, if you don't see it, you're probably in game mode. Hit G, and you'll see the cube. We want to go back to our modes and work with the geometry editing. <coughs> Excuse me. With geometry editing, we can uh, edit the verts and faces of this uh, cube. So what we want to do is line it up, and in the edit mode, select a face, drag it out, drag it out to here. That looks about right. And then we can lower the face, and then select the edge. Oh, I had it. And kind of trace the shape we want. It's a little finicky, so you have to be a little patient with selecting edges and faces. You can also select verts and hold control. It's like multiple verts. Now, uh, just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm also going to add a blocking volume on the floor. So, I recently place blocking volume, and I'm just going to make it the size of my floor here. There we go. And the same thing here. Now, there's a step I need to do with the locking volume. Not, you don't really need to do it, but it's good to know. 
the default setting for blocking volume is um, invisible wall, and that does the trick. But there's a bunch of other settings that you can do: no collision, block all, overlap, block dynamic, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, for different use cases. But for a very simple tutorial, we'll just leave it on the default setting of invisible wall. Now if I do play, I don't fall to the floor, and my ramp works the way I want it to work. But I didn't set a blocking volume on the rest of the map. See? So the next step is to kind of trace the entire shape. And to do that, we'll select our blocking volume. We'll go to our modes. Now, one thing you can do is add multiple blocking volumes, which works. But a cheaper way is you can actually extrude one volume to cover a large space, which I did in the, the main map. So select a face and hit extrude and we can pull out a segment that we need. And then we can do extrude on this side, on this face. Pull out a segment that we need. And one more extrude for the final segment. Then we can go to edit. We can select these two verts here to create our ramp. Actually we should select this entire face because we need all four verts to move up. So there we go, that is one blocking volume where, in, where instead of creating one, two, three, four, I use one blocking volume to get the job done. So I showed you how to create a blocking volume around the ramp using one blocking volume using extrude. Next I'm going to show you how to create a blocking volume that can create smooth collision around these two pillars. So I'm going to go back to our modes, facing the place, blocking volume. And I need to go back to my modes. Geometry editing. Line this guy up as close as possible. And in fact, I'm going to pull it into the wall, so that we give the wall some collision. And let's bring in slightly more. And then I'm going to extrude an edge face from here. And then I'm going to extrude another face on this side. And then one last extrusion over here. And then I'm going to take these edges, these verts here, and going to angle them out. The same for this side. Let me select the widget. Come on. There we go. And then I can extrude this face here out to the pillar and extrude this face out to the pillar and then extrude it up to cover the entire pillar extrude it up oh, wrong button extrude and there we go we created a uh, a shape around our pillar gap and just line this edge up here so now if I play I should be able to run smoothly around these pillars see that? it's a little exaggerated but it makes for better gameplay than being stuck in these little corners here. So using these two techniques, I pretty much traced the entire map and updated the collision to the way I wanted it for better gameplay, for competitive gameplay, so players don't get trapped 
and the map flows smoothly. Much better. Again, I didn't do all the pillars, this will take too much time, but you get the idea. Hopefully this was helpful, and uh, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments below. And thanks for the support, and be sure to like and subscribe, and I will have the map playable very, very soon. Um, I already did a, some lighting tests, but uh, I'm not ready to share that yet. So keep an eye out for that video coming soon, and again, thanks for your support, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.